Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a uh, harbor scene painting uh, of a place called uh, Peggy's Cove in Nova Scotia. Uh, we're painting in watercolor today and this is a painting that I will be doing on November 23rd in our watercolor paint along class that I'm going to have. And uh, so all the students that sign up for that class will be uh, doing this painting. They can also do a painting of their own choice, but the ones that want to follow along will uh, do this one with me. Um, we're uh, going to be doing this, as I said, uh, in watercolor. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about first how I sort of created this sketch. Um, I have a photograph of Peggy's Cove. I have several uh, photographs of the place, but I had this particular one that I sort of liked that I thought maybe it would make a uh, a good painting. I'll have it here on my uh, Kindle Fire and I'll let you take a look at it. It's, it's not a bad photo, but it's not a great photo either. Um, it has this uh, large, uh, I don't know, uh, supports underneath this uh, uh, decking there that don't look very good. And uh, some of the other aspects of it I didn't particularly like. I didn't like the sky. It's kind of all one color. Um, so I did my uh, usual making of a value map and uh, you see that on the top of my easel I always have the uh, photograph and the value map at the top and uh, I use that as a guide for uh, doing the painting. Um, I don't try not to copy the uh, photograph religiously but I do try to use it as a guide. And uh, the first thing I do is really take a uh, piece of tracing paper and I try to recapture the sketch. So I have that shown here for you. I put it on tracing paper um, I don't trace the, the, uh, the sketch because it's, the photograph is considerably smaller than the, the, the uh, tracing paper. And I have the tracing paper cut in an 8.5 by 10, or 8.5 by 11 uh, format so that it's easy to photocopy and make a template for the students that take the class. That way they don't have to worry about the sketch. All they have to do is uh, trace the sketch on their watercolor paper. Their watercolor paper will be uh, 9 by 12. So it's uh, not exactly the same size, but it's close enough that they can uh, put this sketch on and have a, maybe half an inch around the, uh, the paper for their, their painting. So I do that, and uh, then I, I photocopy it, and uh, I have this, which is really the same thing. It's just not on tracing paper. The tracing paper you can see through, and sometimes I use this to sort of get the angles right. If I'm not getting the right perspective, um, I'll use the tracing paper to sort of compare it with the... Uh, photograph to make sure I get the right angles. But other than that, it's uh, just a complete redrawing of the image on tracing paper. And then I can photograph it, or photocopy it rather, and, uh, and use it for uh, a template for the, the class. So that's what I intend to do. And uh, so I will print these out for the class, and they will use those with some graphite transfer paper and copy that sketch onto their paper. Today's painting, however, I'm going to do it on a little bit larger paper. The paper I have is 140-pound uh, cold press paper by Arches, and this size is about 10 by uh, 14 approximately, um, and that's uh, the size I prefer to paint on. It comes in an Arches block of paper, and I use that. Um, that's 22 centimeters by 36 centimeters for those of you who use the metric system. It's also 300 grams per meter squared in terms of the weight. So 140 pounds U.S. is 300 grams per meter squared. Okay, so that's the paper. And as you can see, I have the drawing on here. I've actually had to expand it a little bit and work it out again myself on uh, my particular watercolor paper because it's larger. So uh, I've gotten to draw this a few times now, getting ready for this particular class. Um, it has some interesting aspects about this, this uh, photograph. It has several uh, angles that represent vanishing points. So you see this building on the left has interesting vanishing points. Um, this particular deck has one. Uh, the boat here is significantly foreshortened, which means it looks a lot skinnier this way because you're kind of looking over it. Uh, the buildings on the right side here have uh, interesting angles. So the uh, sketch is, tried, I try to take enough out of the sketch to make it uh, worthwhile uh, for uh, people to basically get the idea of what we're doing here and uh, not put in a lot of extraneous 
stuff. So most of the problem of, of painting with photogra or photographs is trying to figure out what to take out. So uh, the more you can make your sketches look like, almost like a cartoon drawing, if you will, um, and take out a lot of extraneous stuff. Uh, there was other boats in here and a whole lot of uh, material on this decking. I took that all off and only kept a few pieces. The, uh, the support structure under here that didn't look very nice to me, I changed that all around, just made vertical support beams. So you can see the differences in the, uh, the, uh, the sketch from the photograph. Okay, um, let me tell you a little bit about the brushes we're using. Since this is a painting class for students that already have materials, um, we're using a set of brushes that all the students should have if they've taken my class. We're using um, student grade brushes by uh, Dick Blick. They're called Scholastic Golden Taclon brushes. So we have uh, f three flat brushes. We have a three quarter inch, a one half inch, and a quarter inch flat. I have uh, three, four rounds actually. I have a large round, number 12, I have a number 8, and I have a number 4. And then I have a number 4 script liner, which has the longer uh, hairs on it and uh, makes some nice fine lines with that. Um, the paints we're using, again, these are uh, student grade paints, and I use Grumbacher paints. I will overlay this on the uh, video when I go through them, but let me just go through them very quickly. Um, this is the... the uh, little palette that everybody has and uh, we have the paints arranged this way. They're very close together. You can barely get a half inch brush in there. The three quarter inch brush is almost too wide for these wells, but we can get them in a very nice small footprint and people don't have to carry around big palettes. Um, so the uh, paints here going around the palette, we start with Payne's Gray, Ivory Black. I have three blues, Cobalt, uh, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, and Thalo Blue. I have a couple of greens, Hooker's Green and Thalo Green. I have three earth tone colors here, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw sienna. I have three reds. I have a red uh, with has purple in it, which is alizarin crimson. I have sort of a middle tone red, which is carmine hue. And I have a Grumbacher red, which is similar to a cadmium red, has some orange in it. I have three yellows. I have a yellow with orange in it, which is the cadmium yellow. I have a middle yellow, which is called golden yellow. And I have a yellow that has some green in it, which is called lemon yellow. So I have the spectrum covered. I don't need all those paints. I probably won't need all of these brushes uh, either, but um, I have them in case I need them. And uh, it kind of saves time in mixing colors. I don't have to spend a lot of time uh, finding a particular color. If I'm looking for an earth tone, I don't have to try to mix it out of the other paints that I have on the, the, in the palette. So... With that said, I think I've covered everything I want to cover, and it's time to get going on this painting. So um, I'm going to uh, start, as usual, by uh, getting my camera set up. I'll zoom in my main camera here so that you can see this sketch. Hopefully you have a nice border around it, and it's aligned properly. And, uh, and uh, I'll start by telling you we will start like we normally do with putting some clear water um, along the sky here. Um, I'm not going to cover the entire paper with water, but I will uh, put some uh, water in this sky. And I'll come down just to the top of the uh, building here. I'm going to cover these buildings in the background. They're going to be sort of in a foggy mist back here. So I'll put some water here. Um, just wet this side over here. Try to paint around the building so I can leave the uh, edges of those roofs unpainted. At least the water may run down. We may get a few, a little bit of runs here. Um, as you know, I paint vertically, even watercolors. It's a little unusual to paint watercolors this way because of the, the way the water runs and you have to, if you want wet paint, you want it to lay on the paper and not run down the paper, but this helps me make my videos better. At least I don't have to have an overhead uh, infrastructure to hold my camera so I can look, look at a flat piece of uh, paper on the table. So uh, it lets me do this. So to start this sky, um, I'm going to just start out with some ultramarine blue. 
and uh, make myself a little puddle here of ultramarine blue. That's really dark. I actually put some new paint in that well, so I picked up a lot of uh, water with it. But I'm going to just take a little bit here um, and start touching in some, some areas above this roof line down here. Um, I'm going to add just a little burnt sienna and uh, get myself a gray tone. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna will give me a gray. Um, so I'm putting some grays in here. Uh, over here on the right side, I want a little, some gray. Getting this in the clouds. Don't want a lot of brown in there, which I seem to have picked up. So let me see if I can get that out of there a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Um, they want even a little alizarin in there just to warm it up a little bit in some spots. And um, a little more blue. I want, I'm going to want this corner to be somewhat dark um, over these buildings because I'm going to have a lot of dark on the lower left down here in this area. So I want something in that area to sort of balance it. And uh, the best thing to do is to get some of that uh, lizard over there. Well, I'm going to come back and touch that again with uh, um, some of this. Depending on how dark I need it, I may have to come back and hit that sky again, but I don't want to do too much in there right now, just sort of give it a light touch and let these let this sort of run a little bit. Okay. See it running here now below the horizon line. So one way to stop it is to take paper towel and just sort of block it right there. If I dry that paper, it'll stop the paint from running down over here I want it to sort of touch the tops of this don't like that dark spot there but let's get some other grays up here maybe a little more blue you don't want to do too much in the sky when it's wet on wet because you really get you can get blossoms and all kinds of stuff that you don't like so I sort of try to minimize the amount of times I go back into these skies I like the softness of the the way it leaves the paint on the paper. Okay, that's not too bad. Flatten this out a little bit over here like this. Pull up a... Okay. So I've put some color in that sky. Uh, got a few places that look like there's some clouds going on. Okay, this area here, um, I did have it wet, but I don't, I think it, uh, sort of dried out on me very quickly. Um, I'm going to put in some of this uh, gray. These buildings back here are, are there, but they're very uh, light, sort of in a, almost in a fog or a mist. So I'm just going to go back and sort of restate some of these. buildings and uh, got some rocks over here all right usually that's probably going to be too light um, usually if the if the paint looks right when you put it on it's usually going to be too light if it, you need to have it darker than you think because watercolor is always dry approximately 20 to 30 percent lighter um, I'm using a big three-quarter inch flat I don't think I told you that so I'm just putting in some things in the distance And we'll come back and hit some of this again later. But right now I just want to get some 
something that looks like some uh, buildings and maybe some rocks off in the distance. Very light. My uh, pencil lines are showing through around those buildings back there. But let's just put in a few things here, some gray. I'm not trying to paint the rocks back there. I'm not trying to make it look like a... Uh, I don't want those rocks in a lot of detail, but I do want them in... Uh, so that they show up in the fog. Okay. That'll be enough for starters. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to get some... Uh, alizarin out and some blue start mixing me up a uh, little bit of a lavender color over here some of these roofs on the uh, right side I'm going to use a little bit of lavender on them over here okay that will dry up a little lighter. I'm going to put a little more paint and get the next roof just a little more, a little darker color in it. This one here. Maybe a little bit bluer, possibly. Mix a little browns in there and get some other colors. Mix the color up. Don't have it all the same color. Touch in a little more blue in some spots. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. These buildings have sort of a gray tone to them. So let's see what we can do out here. I'm just doing wet on dry now. This paper is totally dry. So these flat brushes are great for this type of painting of architecture. So you can get nice sharp edges with them. Flick in some blues, change the color. Don't keep it the same color. What makes paintings interesting are the variations of, of color that you put in them. Over here, this particular building is too dark. So take the paint out of the brush, get a little water in there, and take that paint and see if you can blend it just a little. I want that to show up nicely around the edge of that this building that's in front of it, because I want to highlight that eaves that sticks out there. Different color. Change the color, stick some browns in, stick some blues in. Okay. Um, let's see, the side of this needs to be similar, but slightly different. put some rocks and other stuff in there. Um, while I'm on this one building, I want to try to stick with this color here if I can. Front. I'm going to paint right over this door. I'm going to try to paint around these posts that are sticking up. <clears throat> Thank you. 
All right, there, that's the way I want to leave that. Um, the um, Just blend that corner a little darker. All right. Okay, those buildings in the distance are not finished, but they're coming along. You can tell they're specifically, kind of specifically what they are. You know, they're buildings sitting there. This is a little dark under here. Too dark, maybe, again. Sometimes I just have to put the paint on and see what happens. Okay. Mm, still using this big brush and using ultramarine blue. Really only three colors. I've only picked up uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and um, Alizarin Crimson. So far. So if I want a gray, I take the blue and the, the uh, burnt sienna and get a gray out of it. If I want a lavender, I take the blue and, and uh, alizarin and get a, a lavender color. I can have it to the red side or I can have it to the blue side. Okay, um, let me see here. Building over here on the left is similar, but it's going to be more pronounced because it is uh, closer to us. And we want to reflect that here. And that's not dark enough. So let's get some more red, get some more blue, pick up a little bit of our Burnt Sienna. Let's see if we can get a. Yeah, that's better. And don't paint big sections with the same color. Mix it up. Get some lavender in there. Some gray. And I'm just taking some kind of clear water in my brush and sort of kind of blend this down. So sort of lighten it up a little bit. So I pick up some other colors. And here I've got to paint around this little life preserver setting there along the wall. Paint around another post. All of these overlaps make a lot of difference in your painting. If you can overlap a post from the deck onto this. Makes some interest. It's not a boring shape. Most buildings, if you look at them, they probably would be fairly boring because they're rectangular and uh, you want to break that up somehow. You don't want to use just rectangles and squares and circles in your painting. You want to make sure that you have uh, a mixture. I'm mixing myself up a little Payne's Gray with some um, ultramarine blue in it and I'm going to see if I can work on this side over here. This is even more. Put some colors in there to mix it up. So I'm doing sort of a graded wash here on the side of the building. 
cooler at the top, warmer at the bottom. Ultramarine blue leaves a sometimes leaves a nice uh, streak in there because that paint is a type of paint that leaves sediment on the paint on the paper. All right, the roof. Let me look at this roof here. It's sort of a bluish gray color. One more the gray in there. Darken it up just a little. It's probably too much. Okay, so I have some variation in color, value, and uh, it's darker than the than the uh, it's darker than the buildings behind it. So you definitely know it's toward you, closer to you, which was the plan and the idea. And I'm still just using this big old three quarter inch brush. I haven't used anything else yet. Um, let me see if I can get a little bit of this water in. It has sort of a gray, gray cast to it, uh, grayish blue, sort of similar to what I have here. Let's see what happens when I do this here. I'm putting a little dark horizon line out here. Paint around these things. I'm just leaving some posts stick up. Show the overlap. That's what makes paintings very interesting if you can overlap things. One gray, too much. The reason I'm getting these strong colors in here is because I actually have put some new fresh paints in my palette and when you do that they sometimes are stronger than if you have hard paint in your palette. Okay under here we have uh, that's the deck we have under here we have more of the water so I'm just going to paint some of this in abstract shapes Back under here, we probably got water. Even over here, we probably have water showing. Using the corner of this big brush. And I'm letting you see underneath these buildings where there's going to be... I'm going to actually paint over that because I'm going to make that very dark in there. So I can always put a darker paint over lighter paint, but in watercolors, can't really put lighter paint over dark paint because uh, it doesn't work. So let's just put in some more paint here. For rocks. I'm leaving room for the bank over here on the left side. I'm painting around my posts that are on my uh, decking here. I'm going to paint around this boat. Leaving room for the boat to come in. I'll put that in later. So I've got some interesting colors. I'm going to show a little reflections over here eventually. So I'm going to change the color a little bit more. So 
Well, this is just a harbor in Peggy's Cove. This particular area is one of the most photographed areas of Nova Scotia, I believe. It's a favorite area of painters and artists of all kinds. So there are a lot of images of Peggy's Cove that you may find if you're out just searching for images. Um, some of this has a little bit of water over here because you can see through the decking right here. So let's put that color in. All right. Something like that. If I want to darken that up, I can darken it up. But all this under here is going to be really dark. And uh, I want it to offset. I want to have sort of balance here. I'm going to have to put some more dark in the, in the sky um, eventually. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Step back and take a look. Does it look like I've got a water way running? Yes, we're going about, uh, going about 32 minutes here. Approximately, I think I want this same color sort of in these windows up here. So I'm going to just drop in a little gray amount of gray here. Um, this brush is too big for some of that stuff, so I might as well step down to my half inch brush here. Half inch flat. So far, I've only used flat brush, half inch, and uh, and my uh, three quarter inch. Pitch that up again. Or what was I looking over here? I was going to put in that to be a little darker. I'm going to be over there. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my Payne's gray add it to this mixture and see if I can get just a little darker wind over here. There and there's one here as well. Okay and we even have this door opening that's very dark. So I will just do that and maybe put a little darker uh, frame around it when I do some of the fine details. Inside here, this door on this particular building, I want it to be even darker because this is closer to my focal point and center of interest. I don't know if I'll get it dark enough with Payne's Gray. If you don't get it dark enough with Payne's Gray, a very beautiful black can be made by using a Lizard and Crimson and uh, um, Thalo Green. Thalo Green and alizarin. I'm going to make a little pile over here just to show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Thalo green, clean the brush out, pick up some alizarin, put it in here, and you see the color getting very dark. And you can make it a red dark or you can make it a green dark by just adding more of one of the other colors. So this dark will be much darker than the Payne's gray that I was using. Should be anyway, hopefully. You know, taper it from darker to lighter at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it that well on the video, but up close I can see it and I know the top is darker than the bottom. And um, that's what I want in there right now. Okay, so where are we? got a, uh, a good good start to this painting probably half done not quite maybe um, these rocks and some of the areas in the, in the back I think I'll go back and touch some of them up those here this area probably a little darker than I need it so pick up the paint with the brush just sort of dry it out OK, 
Okay. Let's see if I can pick up some ochres in here. All that in the background here has all been made up by me because the actual photograph had all kinds of stuff obliterating what you see back here. So you couldn't really tell what it is. I'm making up a sort of a, a bank with some rocks in it and changing my colors. This is an area that gets to tidal harbor so water will come in several times a day and flood this area and raises the water level up and so typically these things are very dark and ugly and have a lot of black on them and left over from the, the seawater but I don't want to make this a black painting so I'm sort of improvising here what goes on we got that I'm leaving an area for a little uh, rail of some sort here some paintings and darks in behind it negative painting it's called all right so I got some color change going on in there some things that look like rocks Hopefully that looks like rocks back there. Yeah. All right, probably need a few shadows in here to sort of highlight it, make some of it stand out. All right. Let's see, this decking has a reddish gray color to it. And in here, Change the color a little bit. Okay. Go back, pick up some of this other color. So I have now painted this deck. The other deck on the other side is similar type construction, but I'm going to make it slightly different color. I don't want it to be the same, same as this color. Um, so I'm painting around now beams, not beams, but uh, posts that stick up. We give ourselves a little bit of a look of a deck back here. This is fairly tight painting. Leaving room for my posts. Okay. Where else do I need this kind of color here? Maybe, I don't know if I'm going to put that color in there or not. Let me kind of think about some of these colors. Don't want them to be too strong. This particular beam here is uh, to stand out from what's behind it so it either has to be darker or it has to be lighter okay 
these other little posts that stick up are somewhat of a different color, but I'll just put in some posts and rails along here like this. And it goes down and gets darker and dirtier as it goes down. Pick up some dark colors and make it because this area, this part of the post will get covered with water as the seawater comes in. So these are all sort of have a two-tone color to them. Sort of a brownish color maybe at the top and a little bit darker muddy toward getting toward the black color from the water that gets over them when the tide comes in. All right, that's starting to show some of the structure of the uh, decking on this particular front building. that dry a little bit and let's go work on some of these over here I'm gonna get my big brush back out because I got a lot of paper to cover over there so I'm gonna just start picking up some some of these colors that are in my palette and just start coming in here and putting in this almost like an underpainting get this in and then I can come back over it with darker values and uh, separate out the colors better. Still using these three primary colors, red, uh, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue, and then throwing in some burnt sienna into it. some highlights in there. Change the color, pick up something different. Pick up these, uh, put more red in it maybe. Pick up a little of this ochre, that'll warm it up a little bit. starting to get something that looks like rocks along the bank. I want to darken the bottoms of those a little bit more in a moment. Pick up all of this. The other way to make rocks or to make any kind of boulder or something like that when you've got some wet paint on the paper um, is to use a either a knife or a, a card you can use a plastic old credit card or something that you used to use as a for, for uh, any kind of a plastic card it doesn't have to be a credit card but um, so many plastic cards for 
floating around these days that you can uh, take that and I have one here that's left over from a hotel that I had stayed in and you can actually if this is wet enough you can actually come in and scrape over the top and you'll get some interesting rough edges scrapes out the paint and leaves some uh, interesting texture there as long as the paint's wet enough if the paint is too dry it won't scrape out anything if it's too wet you'll scrape it out and it'll come right back in on you and it'll just fill in the areas that uh, you just tried to scrape out of so let's leave that for now and let that dry a little bit I'm going to put some more darks back in here under this building and finish off the the, the posts around that particular deck in the back brush here. Let's take let's see if I can put some gray color along this particular part of the building. Sort of a board that sort of fits along the edge of this building. It sort of separates one edge from the other. I'm going to take a little of this color here and put in this eave. And we'll make it come down here. And we want to warm it up a little bit at the bottom. Just a little bit. Actually have an eave that sticks out, a shadow, and there, that's sort of what I want to do. Something like that. Little dark edges in here, maybe put some dark edges along there in some spots, dry the brush out, sort of blend it together. Okay. All right, it's starting to look like something. Underneath this area under here is really going to be dark. So I'm going to start with a, uh, see if I can get this Thalo green and alizarin mixture going again. Get another dark color. And have a little ochre in there to help keep it warm enough. Darker, darker, even some of these areas. That's the same color as the post. I don't want it to be the same color as the post. It's got to be darker. There. You have to know which is a post and what's the what's not a post back in here. There we go. We're starting to get some feel for that. You can see those posts are starting to stand out now. Even though I haven't painted a post, I've painted what's behind the post, and voila, you have. And this wants to go down all the way here. Okay, and then this is going to be rocks and so forth down here. As long as I don't forget which is a post and which is a background, I'll be okay. In the foreground, we're going to pick up some more of this ochre and uh, maybe a little of the uh, burnt sienna. Get a reddish brown here. Now we got some rocks we're going to put in back here. Darker at the bottom. Put in a shadow under them. 
Leave some light areas that kind of look like there might be some light hitting off of some of these. Something like that. Go out here and put a few more out here. That redden it up a little bit. Add a little alizarin to it. Okay. Something like that. So now I'm starting to see the look I like. Get my card out here and see if I can put in a couple of scrapes and make this look like there's some over the top of these rocks. There you go. Something like that. Do too much of this, it looks kind of manufactured and hokey, but a little bit of it goes a long way. Alright. Uh, my boat is left. My Some fine details are left. I have a nice little interesting highlight here that I want to this particular barrel is sort of going to be my focal point on the left side here. This, there's a barrel here that has something in it. I don't know if it's water or something, but there's a spout on it. I'm going to just paint this little job in here. Make it a little darker on the right side. Add a little bit of my violet that I create here. Red. Thing that's red usually pulls your eye to that area. Have another little box of some sort sitting right here that I don't want it to be the same color as that. I want it to stand out. Brown it up a little bit. It has to be a different color than the decking and it has to be a different color than this um, barrel that's next to it here. If I can put a little more of this flooring in here. Okay, we have some horizontal streaks, okay. this this oh, let me see this is kind of dry under here let me finish this up while I'm messing around over here let's get these posts finished up I don't want that color ochre and my alizarin and my blue There's my sort of a brownish color for these posts.
All right, I got a couple different posts. Some that are setting back further. Some that are closer. Okay. This is in here. Let's put a little water in there. Just sort of tie this together. I'm just putting some light color over these white marks here to like a second wash over them and all of a sudden I have different colors in there. Alright. We'll see if that's going to work. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. have a little rail back here. I'm going to paint it with this uh, gray color, give it a steel gray color. Okay. All right. Okay, we're getting it finished off pretty nicely. Uh, a touch. I'll put in some darks here around these windows. A little shadow. And here we have sort of lighter on the outside. And just a slight value darker on the inside here. If I can make that work. It's not dark enough. Yeah, there we go. In here, we've got a little swatch right there. All right. Hmm. So this is dark on my brush. I'm going to fill in some of these spots that look like they need a little bit of tension. I got a lot of white paper sitting around here. Okay. This boat is an odd nondescript color as well. It's sort of a gray, gray, blue-gray type color. Not overly crazy with the color, so I may change it and make it a a little more red in it or something and see what happens here. Let's put a back on it here like this. Okay. Something like that. I may want to get my round brush out. Probably my number eight round here. Let's see if it's gonna help me paint that boat since it has some curves in it. I want to uh, sort of reflect that. It's a little easier sometimes with a round brush here than it is with a flat brush since I have a curved surface. Over here, same thing. up, take it, change the color, maybe put a little more, just lighten it up as it comes forward. There, let's take a little uh, blue, some kind, and maybe touch in the, down here, give ourselves a different color. Something like that. It is really in shadow over here, so it could be darker. And okay. 
<clears throat> has some really dark darkness in the center of this. Right in here, there's a like that. Pull it across here. gray back here, maybe gray it down a little bit. All right. I think that may look like a boat, hopefully. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at the some of the remaining posts over here. that stick down and hold this decking up. Sort of tie it together. Have a darker value, they'll stand out has to be darker than what's behind him. Touch it, make it darker. All right. Under here, we've got more posts. something back in here this is not quite doesn't look quite right <clears throat> okay all right Let's see how we're Long. Let me see if I can put a little eave along here. I can do this with the flat brush, but I can also do it with the uh, round brush. couple of posts hiding back in here as well. Mix it up with my finger, blur it, get some interesting texture. Put in some 
I want that to be too interesting over there, but I do want to have a little more texture. All right, those buildings I think I'm going to just maybe stop on, put a little dark around this window. <clears throat> just highlight it slightly, this door. Something like that. Maybe a few more darks along here to sort of highlight this post. I do have a ladder going down in the water here. I left out the water behind it, but now yeah, we can put in some other indications of ripples of water here to sort of blend it out, soften it up in some areas. Change the color a little bit, mix it up. It's all dry in there now, so anything I do, I'm putting dry, wet on dry. Horizontal streaks, horizontal strokes. foreground a little darker. Typically the foreground should be, whether it's water or whatever, should be darker as you come forward. All right. just enough okay okay now I'll let that dry for a while I'm gonna put in another if I got this round brush this little uh, life preserver setting over here I'm gonna give him some reddish color sort of a brown inside here that looks like it might be shadowed from the, the building other areas here that might be in shadow. Okay. Um, the, uh, there are shadows. There are some dark shadows under this boat and there's some Nice shadows, reflections on the right side as well. You Let me see this area back here. It looks like it needs a little attention of some sort. Not crazy about the way it looks right now. Okay, a little better. Um, I do want to put in a nice shadow for my, on this building here, I don't have the shadow in yet. It's going to be, I'm going to make myself a bluish lavender color and I'm just going to pour, sort of put in a, in here just sort of pull down. that. A little darker maybe if I can get a little darker. OK. 
Okay, that shadow just makes that eave pop out when you do that. Um, I think I need some darker. I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue and just see if I can do another little wash on this side of the building because it is more in shadow. Um, it's maybe too dark, but we'll see. it down, down. Yeah, something like that. That helps this stand out and just take water and just sort of blend it up. Clear water. All right, now it makes that come forward even more. Okay, I'm getting very close here to calling this one finished. Uh, how are we doing water over here? All right, um, I do have some other shadows and things I want to put in over here to sort of highlight some other rocks. The dark brings out the light. In between I have little highlights that look like they're light spots on these rocks, so I'm just going to cover them with some paint and all of a sudden they are definitely lighter than what's under there and so it makes the make it look like there's a um, highlight on them. Something like that. Alright, maybe that's a little... Alright, this area, got a couple more things to do. This background still bothering me a little bit back. I need to blend this more. It's sort of too abrupt. It needs to fade, fade into the background. That's not going to help it. Whoa! That's what happens when you stick your brush right in the paint and you don't test it on the paper towel before you stick it in there. That might be a little better. Okay, we got nice little textures. I don't have too many places where I have one big solid color without some change in the color. Mm, just a little blue here. All right, now couple things. Take some wet, clear water. Wet water. Water is always wet. Put in room for my shadow down here. I've got this big shadow that sort of sticks down here from this boat. Put that in and let it start loosening up the paper. I got a big shadow over here. All of this is in shadow. See if I can put in a dark shadow around this. 
that water in there, it's going to make it give a soft edge. See how it's blending? Pull straight down, it'll help even more give the impression of reflections. Pull brown in here for these guys. Vertical streaks say reflection. Soft edges. Take my brush and just sort of clear water, soften them up. Okay. I think I'm going to stop on that and say that is pretty well finished. I might do some fine touch up with a fine rigger, but right now I think I'm going to just let it stop for now and uh, call this one finished. I will zoom in a little bit and let you see some of the detail here of the boat, the shadow. All right, that I think is gonna do it for me. And uh, I wanna thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton signing off. See you soon. Bye.